Do patients smoke during their outpatient visits? Do patients eat triple cheeseburgers? How many commit suicide? We have to ask the question, when are they smoking? When are they eating those cheeseburgers? When are they committing suicide? It's in the white space. It's that period in between the visits that they come into our facilities. It's between those blue dots where health really happens. And that's where we as individuals, we as the military health system, and we as a nation absolutely must go. We have 100 minutes a year with our patients. How much health happens in those 100 minutes? Health care to be sure, and quality health care to be sure. But what about health? We focus the majority of our peacetime budget on those 100 minutes, but are we truly influencing health? From the patient's perspective, there are more than a half a million minutes in a year. Let's overlay our 100 minutes of influence. Look at that. Is this the amount of influence that we have on the patients that enter our military treatment facilities? How about this? When you look at that, no, it's actually this. Take a minute. In the back of the room or up front, can you see that? Here's an arrow that's going to help you see where that blue dot went. This is not an eye test. <laughs> the Army spends $13 billion on that tiny little blue dot where that arrow is focusing right now. Think about that. $13 billion is focused on the smallest piece of an individual's life that we're able to touch. Our focus, the nation's focus, is primarily on health care. That's the dot that is barely visible to those. I'm not saying we don't need to provide care because we absolutely do. World-class health care is what we do. We do it well and we have international recognition for that. We have to focus on health. How do we address the other 99% of the patient's lives to improve their health? To our patients, this is not just the white space. It's their life. So what impacts this white space? This green circle represents about a third of a patient's life, time at work and the time that they spend at school. How does a soldier's work influence their health? How do we impact that? Last week, I bumped into the Sergeant Major of the Army in the halls of the Pentagon. I mentioned our transition from a health care system to a system for health. He absolutely gets it, and he asked what he could do. Think about that, the Sergeant Major of the Army, the highest enlisted soldier in our Army, is interested in partnering with us to improve the health of our Army and all those that are serving. It's a powerful partnership. My point is that we're not alone in our journey towards health. We can't be alone. Our line leadership wants to help influence the green space. They're a crucial partner in this journey towards health. This yellow circle represents another third of a patient's life, family and personal time. I'm learning about personal time, which I don't get much with my aides and my EAs. No, I'm teasing. What about our family and our friends? Who's cooking for our soldiers? Who's shopping for their food? Who influences their behaviors? How do we reach out to them? The remaining white space, the last third of a patient's life, is sleep. How important is sleep to overall health? And I won't ask for a show of hands of individuals that got more than six hours of sleep in this audience. But it's an important piece for us in our life. Sleep management is one of the areas that we found downrange 
that we can have the biggest impact in health if we can focus on improving sleep and sleep management for those that are in a deployed environment. And I would submit that's the same for those that, as we're working, whether it's OCONUS and CONUS. When you're looking at this circle, it represents the social media and the internet. Facebook has overtaken email and the internet has overtaken television. This past Sunday in the Washington Post, a front page business section story said that 80% of the adults use the internet to look for health information. If we're going to influence health, where must we provide that information? It's not enough to have a social media page. We need to be relevant, we need to be engaging, and we need to have an impact. To move from a culture of health care to health, we need to reach beyond those 100 minutes. We can do better. Think about a five-day blood pressure check. Today, our patients leave work, they drive to our military treatment facilities, they search for a parking space, they check in, they sit in a waiting room full of sick patients to eventually get their vital signs taken. Is that patient-centered? Right now, civilian and military apps are available for vital signs, behavioral health, and chronic disease management. Should we continue to invest in brick and mortar to enable our 100 minutes of health care? Or should we arm our beneficiaries with a Bluetooth-enabled scale and blood pressure cuff for their home? Should patient-centered medical home be at our home, or should it be at their home? Where is the bulk of information about our soldiers' health? It's our electronic health record, summarizing 100 minutes a year. Think of all the time and energy and dollars that we've invested, and we're documenting 100 minutes of care. What about a record of their personal health? What if we empower our patients to be more active in their white space? Let me just show you what I mean. This is a small little device, and it's my personal little device that I've started using. It counts my steps, monitors my sleep, and charts my activity level. It costs $99, and it's part of my personal he health record. I don't want anybody to critique or monitor my health right now because we just started using this. But next year, I'm going to come back, and I promise I'll be a little healthier in front of this audience. But it automatically monitors records, and it does motivate you. I can share it with my family. I can share it with my friends. I can share it with my social networks and my healthcare team. Such technology will become more and more influential. It will help activate people to take greater control of their lives and their health. I'm extremely proud to be part of Army Medicine and the military health system. I'm proud of our accomplishments each and every day. We have executed the health care mission with remarkable success through very trying times. There are difficult challenges ahead, but our mission remains clear, maintaining the readiness and the health of our military. Together, we have the willingness the ingenuity, and the moral clarity to succeed. In order for us to get to health, we must empower our patients, move, behind, move beyond the 100 minutes, and influence behaviors that are in the white space. The way ahead is connected, it's collaborative, and it's patient-centered. That's how we get to health. That's how we get better. Dr. Woodson, my fellow Surgeon Generals, Ladies and gentlemen, Army Medicine is a collaborative partner committed to collective health. Together, we can lead the nation. I pledge to you today my resources, my focus, and in fact, my passion to implement this mission of health. The need is urgent. The time is now. For today's military, tomorrow's recruits, 
and our nation's future. Army Medicine, serving to heal, honor to serve. Thank you.